Hey everyone, this is Dan the GM bringing you episode 58 of What the Dice. Now, I know most of you out there have a Twitter account. I want you guys to follow us. Twitter.com forward slash What the Dice Pod. I will post all the time when we got episodes coming up, when our live shows are, as well as other really cool stuff. And if you follow there, you can jump over to our website and join our Discord. Something new I've been doing is I've been pulling names of characters from our Discord. So if you want your name on the show, you gotta hop on over to Discord and join us. Well, enough of me. I'm gonna shut up and let you guys get on with this week's episode. Enjoy. As we arrive at the storyteller's campsite, we watch as he is sitting behind a stump and is slowly descaling a fish. The small shiny scales fall onto the ground and disappear into the grass. The storyteller looks at us before stabbing the knife into the wooden stump. Ah, my friends, just in time for us to have a meal. Now, I'm sure you remember that last time you were here, the agents had a chance to finally drain some of the water, getting them that much closer to the strange sword that is hidden deep within the water. Well, that also means that they are that much closer in solving this very fishy temple. Well, my friends, have a seat, sit back, relax, and hear me tail. As you look out, it looks like this sword is still deep underwater, probably about 40 feet, but you still have the large koi that are swimming around. All right, so it raised itself by 10 feet. Yes. What would you guys like to do? Go back and study to see if that thing gave me any clues on how to talk to the fish. While Kalila does that, Clyde, what would you like to do? Uh, so the day is only raised 10 feet, you said. Mm Mm-hmm. And is the water still draining, or? It looks like there's a current now. Like a current going down? Like the current going out to the, the cave, like if it opened up the cave for the koi to leave. So we just have to get all the water. Well, so eventually the water is going down? Yeah, or the platform is raising up. Okay, so we just have to wait a little bit, and I'm going to move to here. Um, and As you move onto that platform, reflex check. I say, and check for traps on the way. Yep, no traps, but I do need a reflex check. Uh, 15. The wind picks up as you are launched backwards onto your feet on the other end. So you are kind of back at the uh, back at the beginning of the little ramp. Cool. I'm going to take one step forward and see if it happens again. You have strong hero hair. I'm going to angle my shield and take another step forward. The wind feels like you are in a category two hurricane. Okay. So you can legitimately feel that your footing is sliding backwards just a little. All right, so I guess this cannot be done in this kind of instance. What about the other side? Is it the same? Yep. The Fibulous. What would you like to do while Clyde jumps around playing with the wind? The Fibulous will kind of chuckle to himself watching Clyde slide around. And he's wondering now if there's a, a uh, like the pedestal he's on now, if there's one on the other side. So he's going to go back into this far right room here and take a look upwards. Uh, which way are you going? Are you taking the northern route or are you going all the way down to the south? What part of the circle is that? Did you, did you go clockwise or counterclockwise? Uh, one counterclockwise because that's the route we'd, we'd already explored. Clyde, I need a perception check. Uh, 14. You notice that 
there is dripping water as you cross the northern northeastern area. It you notice that there is a stream of steadily flowing water. Cool. I'll let everybody know that eventually, but I'm gonna continue doing what I said I was gonna do first. Alright. Kalila, you have learned nothing new. So what do you want to do, Defibulus? You've walked into the room and it's still the same. You don't see anything different. Yeah, check the northern part of the wall, like up around where the shadowing looks. It looks like there's still fog of war in the room. No, oh, that's my bad. There you go. Oh, okay. That definitely makes a difference in what I'd be doing. Would you like to go back and watch Clyde slide? Yeah. Okay. As we round back up into the same room again. Mm hmm You guys watch as Clyde tries to inch his way forward and slides back, or if he tries to go really far, gets thrown back to the beginning. Yep. Well, Alice probably just thinking to herself, that, that looks kind of fun, but not the purpose. Um, are you guys standing where you guys are standing on the map? Yes. Is that where you're taking? I need perception checks from both of you. 23. 26. You both notice a trail of water trickling down at your feet and into the koi water. All right. Hey, there's a stream. Yeah. The Fibulous is going to try to see if he can follow and see where the stream is coming from. Okay. You notice in the northeastern area that there is almost like a conch shell at the bottom and there's just a constant drip of water creating this tiny little stream the water is sweet smelling hmm kill your shell and sweet smelling water that's not normal let's try and investigate to see if there's something to wiggle something that has a scratch you know prior things that she has found throughout this to indicate maybe there's something here Fibulous, what would you like to do? He's going to help her with the conch shell because he thinks there's something up with that. Okay. Per uh, perception checks. Also, hey, Clyde, we found a particular shell. Coming. <laughs> After I stop sliding. <laughs> 27. Okay. Got to roll. Hold on. What am I adding? Perception. Oh, uh, dirty 20. After playing around with trying to figure out what's going on, Kalila kind of puts her finger over the stream, like covering the hole in the conch shell. And you notice that a door is slowly lifting up. Water pressure. So are you going to hold your finger there until the door opens? Yes. As it lifts up, you start to see a brightly lit room. It is that beautiful ocean blue. When the door hits the top, you see two fish, stone fish, move out from the angles and lock the door in place. He'll be pointing that out to Defibula so he can watch and be like, cool with her. And for Clyde to see as well, if he's there. Yay. Defibulus is definitely watching this. As you enter into this room, this room almost feels like a study. You see different hand-drawn pictures of many different fish, and then wands that look like they have been carved from driftwood and old pieces of coral, some even from large fish bone. The air in here smells exactly like the ocean. You can see in the center a giant tank that is growing all different colors of seaweed. You notice that the, there is no glass. It's almost as if there's a magical field holding the water in place. Oh. The fibulous. I don't want to touch it. The fibulous. Right? Let's start with you. The fibulous is like from being kind of 
like, ooh, this is kind of cool looking. He's going to see if he can find any mechanisms and what have you in here. As you walk around, I need a perception check. 22. You notice that the wands are all pointing in one direction. And the one thing you do notice is in those little dome areas that are to the north and to the east, inside, there are statues of that are wood. The first one looks like it is a middle-aged elf with long hair. The next one, her ears are shortened. Her hair looks like it is gotten braided or looks like it is of dreads. And you notice that the water, there's no water inside. As you move to the one to the east, you notice that there are some slits in her neck on left, the left and the right side. And it looks like there is, the tank is half full. The last one to the far east, she has a tail like a mermaid. Her hair is wild with braids and dreads and her hands look like they are finned. Each time you look at them, you notice that there are less and less wands on her. Less like wands going from east to east to west or west to east? Uh, so basically you see the most amount of wands on her person in the far north. The one to the northeast, I will give you some little dots. So this has the most wands. Oh, okay. This has the least wands. So every time, every single one of these, she has like, if she has 10 wands, she's got six wands, she's got three wands, she has zero wands. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yep. The Fibulous will continue studying this and I'll check the water levels on each of the, the domes to see if the water is like lessened by each of them as well. It seems as if it, the more elven she looks, the less water there is. So, elven to mermaid. Yeah. The old elf has like a ton of water in its container, right? No, it is completely empty. Ah, okay. And the full mermaid has is fully submerged. Correct. So, what do you guys think? Do we should we like swap the water around, lower it? I don't know because it makes sense that you know the mermaid has the most water. It might make sense, but in order to affect other things, mermaids can come above water as well. It's not like it's going to affect her negatively. Uh, so on these circles, what is that the only thing that can be moved or is there other things that... It looks like the wands can be moved. Like there are wands that are on the wall. All right, investigate all the wands. See if there's a difference, see if there's a thief. Yeah, there's a okay. pattern or something. I agree, I agree with you. Perception check. 22. 13. 14. Kalila, you notice that the wands closest to the mermaid are the most intricate. The ones by the elf are the least intricate. We should swap the wands. Yeah, couldn't hurt. More than everything else has. Kalila will switch the wands. Okay. Anyone helping her? Yeah, the figure yeah. will help her. I mean, I think we're all we'll helping. We're all on the same page, so we all touch the wand. We all share in the, the, the whatever's going to happen. As you guys move the wands around, I need a perception check from everyone. 16. Uh, 9. 28. The Fibulous notices not smiling when she first was looking at when you first were looking at her, as you move the, the wands around, she begins to smile, a motherly smile, like a proud smile of watching someone understand something. The room begins to flood quickly with water, and all of a sudden, a quick burst of light, and you are moved. Oh. 
Oh gosh, here we go. And teleportation. What I was going shocked about is, wait, she's alive? No, she's a statue. Oh, just all right. Kalila's seen weirder things. That's not so bizarre. Yeah, that's true. In this room, you see a large statue made of coral, a tail that is blue and green. On her back, a bow of twisted ironwood. In her hand, a small orb about the size of a pearl. Her hand is outstretched to you as if it was a gift. Ooh, okay. Lyle humbly take the things. Oh, I was going to say, uh, yeah. Clyde will bow and express his thanks, and then, I, you know, Clyde's going to take it. Go ahead. Well, I assumed I was just standing. I don't know if anybody could have. I made assumptions. So Kalila is touching the pearl? Yeah, she's curious enough cat to do it. Sure, why not? As you touch the pearl, your mind starts to flash images. You are sitting out on a small desert island, looking out at the sea, watching porpoises dance and swim. You are not Kalila anymore. You are this strange young elf that had just gotten sea wrecked. Oh, I get to see her live through her eyes. Aww. You wade out into the water and you can feel the ocean's pull. Your mind gives you the knowledge of she's a druid, a young inexperienced druid that decided to go out on her own and try to explore and learn. A sea crashed her ship and she was stranded. Refusing to harm any living creature, she survived on seaweed and coconuts. She finally began to master taking a wild form. And her first time swimming in the ocean she felt if this is where she belonged. For the rest of her life, she dedicated herself on the study of animals that belong in the ocean. Each time taking magic spells and experimenting on herself to slowly transform her into a mermaid because she no longer wanted to live on the land and deal with the wars of the humans. This was her temple, and this is where her final stead was. The last thing she did before transforming into a mermaid permanently was to imbue all of her magic into a single sword so that the one person that needed it could use it. She has a smile as she steps forward and looks back at you. It is a cunning smile, a smile of a playfulness that you would see in a young child. The dream fades and you are now looking back at your compatriots and you hear the sound of stone rising and water rushing as the door behind you clicks and opens. Well, it's gonna respectfully take that moment of like to respect the vision and what she's been t shown essentially and refer to her compatriots what she saw and then go how long was I out? She had been out for about 10 minutes. Yeah, 10 minutes give or take. But the door behind you has opened up now so awesome. So where are you guys going now? I would assume back to the dais. Back into the room to see if the sword's there. As you enter into that center room, a large platform has raised in the center, and you see a beautifully carved, single handed red obsidian sword. Do I still get blown backwards? Nope, not at all. Is everyone joining him over at the platform? Yes. Yep. Okay. Clyde, perception check. 
Uh, 13. Okay, you don't notice it. <laughs> Do I ever? Nope. Anyone else want to roll a perception? You're welcome to, always. Sure. Okay. 20. 21. Looking at the sword closer, it looks as if it was carved from a single piece of obsidian, reinforced with what looks like blue mithril on the handle and the handguard. It looks as if the handle itself has taken the shape of an eel wrapped around and then its fins splayed to create the handguard. The blade itself has a slight jaggedness to it as if it was a shark's tooth. Who is taking the sword? Hides the one all the way out of the pedestal. We're just looking. Well, no. I asked if you guys had joined him on the pedestal. It is big enough for everyone to stand on. Oh. Um, sure. I, I will here. lift up the sword because it looks heavy. Let's see. I need a will check. You are a will check. Ah! What's that, a whale check? Not a whale check. You dorks. 17. You have this sudden urge to begin to dance. To Fibulus and Kalila, as he grips the sword, it becomes a large red fish. Clyde, I need you to roll a d6 and tell me what you roll. Okay, I rolled a d6. Okay, what did you get? I got a one. The Fibulous. Clyde begins to walk up to you dancing and slaps you twice with this large fish. You take one point of damage as a scale sticks to your face. Ow, what the hell, man? Do, do, do I have um, use of my vocal cords? Yes. But you have no clue what's going on. This feels I have natural. no clue what's going on, but my body's just kind of dancing on its own. Yep. Lila definitely has a look of shock, like, what in the world? And then watches him get slapped with a fish and is trying not to laugh. He gets slapped with a giant red fish. Yep, giant red fish you were being slapped what, with. What kind of fish is it? Giant red one. Do I know its species? Knowledge nature. I rolled a 10. Well, you are from a fishing village. It is a giant red herring. <laughs> oh, yeah, Kalila laughing for a second. So, is anybody going to help me stop dancing? Do I shoot him or do I club him? After a minute or so of dancing, you stop. Now, Clyde and Defibulous have a strange smell of fish on them. And without saying a word, she's going to pull out the water skin and douse them both in some clean water. Clyde, what would you like to do with this uh, fish that is in your hands? Um, I mean, is it affecting me at all anymore? Nope, it is just a giant red fish that is flopping around in your hand. Uh, and the water is still there? Yep. I'm going to turn to them. Should I put it back in the water since it's kind of flopping in my hands? Put it back on the pedestal first and see what happens. Okay. i do that first. It turns back into that beautiful, ornate sword. Well, you know, what about that statue that was up above us that looked like it was supposed to hold something? Maybe we're supposed to put it up there. I was going to get slapped with another fish. But how do we get back up there? The thing um, broke on the way But down. it was still a staircase. Remember all the bumps? I'm sure we could either climb or walk our way back up. If not, I got a grappling hook. Okay. Um, you have 100 feet of rope? Let me check. If she has rope, I have rope. And it usually is 50 feet of rope. Okay. Just checking. So what are you going to do? Are you picking up the sword again? Um. Why don't we have somebody else try and pick up the sword? Who wants to pick up the sword? Cole Isla will pick up the sword. Will checks. 16? 
Kalila starts to dance as the sword turns into a giant fish. Oh, not again. Back away slowly. I need you to roll a d6. Two. Clyde, you have been slapped by a fish and take one point of damage as a single scale slides down your face. I pick up this. I I take the scale off of my face. She'll open your back. Or no, wait. She'll just wait to see because the effect stops eventually, right? After you hit him, you suddenly feel like you don't need to dance anymore. All right, that's obnoxious. Let's go to the statue. As she just continues to not put the sword fist down, so it doesn't happen again. Red hair. So all the way back up to the giant fish statue. Yes. Before we do that, does the fish look like it's in distress? It doesn't look like it is alive. It looks like it is just a giant fish. Okay. It's a little slimy, but other than that, it looks like a giant fish. All right. Making your way up to the fish statue. You notice that the stale smell has gone away and the algae is starting to slowly dry up. As you make it up to the fish statue, it looks like its hands have, or its fins, have lowered to its side. So it doesn't want to hold it anymore? Correct. Uh, guys? Try it anyway. All right, she will, but where, there's nowhere to put it. On the ground in front of it. Okay, but that means I have to pick it back up again. I'll pick it back up if we need to. Who is following him onto the dais? Well, I'm the one carrying the fish. I have to. Okay. Setting the sword down, or setting the fish down, it turns back into the beautiful sword. Nothing changes. All right, Kalila is going, leaving the, the vicinity. Yep. All right. And I'll pick up the sword again. We'll check. 24. No, 3. You feel like dancing, and you will continue to feel like dancing until you fish slap someone. Cool. I was actually just sitting there, and we'll look over at Defibulous going, I can't wait to hand this to the Rat Scholar. I feel really bad for everyone in there. Hand it to, Re to Re Sir Reginald! <laughs> The fabulous. You should hand this to Sir Reginald when we get back to town. Okay. Slap him with a fish. Or Sir Reginald. <laughs> Clyde, one of the things you notice as you have to dance your way across the three foot gaps is that you have a flawless ballet jump, clearing each one with ease. Cool. Increases dexterity. Takes notes. How close are you getting to any of your allies? Uh, I'm not really getting that close to them. You're gonna keep 15 feet away? Yeah. As we all try to exit. Alright. You exit the temple without any other problems. So, what do you guys want to do? Are you guys going to head back to the holy city? As we are exiting, she's like, uh, you're still dancing. <sighs> Fine. She'll just stand still and be like, hit me with the fish. And then put it in the bag of holding. Or put try putting it in the bag of holding. Before you try and hit me with it. Kalila. I don't think I can let go. <laughs> no, you can. You just have to hit someone with it first. Kalila takes one point of damage and a fish scale is on her face. And the sword yeah. releases its weird trance on your body and you're able to put the sword away. What does the scales look like? Like a fish scale, as if you had actually scaled a fish. So it is small, red, and slimy. And you both smell like fish again. Hit it successfully in the back of holding, right? Yes. Okay. Outside, the air is fresh and you can feel the setting sun on your skin. Kalila has never been so happy to be in fresh air as she has right now. <laughs> Overflow to the point of rolling around in the grass. 
Would you guys like to set up camp and then head to the Holy City afterwards, or do you want to... What is your plan? That's a wise idea. Yeah, we should probably set up camp. Yeah, setting up camp. Definitely. And then going, should we go back to the Dwarven City? Or since we already have the inventory trading stuff, should we just go back to the Holy City? I don't think they're going to let us back in anytime soon. I'll just glare at them again. Yeah, we'll just bully our way through. Grr. I didn't growl last time. I might be able to growl next time and be more effective. You also have this magical sword that you mm-hmm. can fish slap people with. Yeah, but that doesn't work if there's a door between us. Yeah. City? I think city. Not that we know of, at least. City it is. All right. So you rest. You take what date, time you need to travel before you decide to rest. In the morning, you are able to, you are welcome to the sounds of a beautiful morning day, and you are able to get back on the trail almost immediately. You travel for about half the day. The sun is high in the sky, and you enter into a wooded area. I need a perception check from the Fibulus. 29. The Fibulus. As you are sitting in the back of the cart, you hear three fireworks go off. As in front of the road, a large tree comes crashing to the ground. Up on the mountainside, you hear a voice that you haven't heard in a long time. Mm, The fabulous. Come out and play. He just goes. The fabulous. I can only guess. Was that the brother we need to kill? Yeah, that kind of sounds like him with a much more sinister tone to his than his normal everyday a- aggravating voice. I need awesome. One more Detective perception check. Vol. <laughs> Not twenty. Dirty twenty. Up on the mountainside, where you see the yellow square I put on your map, you see. A carriage with a very interesting looking siege weapon. Very familiar to a model that you found at the guardhouse. You see your brother, a dwarf, an orc, and a halfling all standing on the ridge. You hear two more fireworks go off and you see your brother and his sinister smile. Been accosted by leeches, went on a psychedelic trip, got slapped with a fish. And now I have to deal with my brother with an artillery cannon. And this is where we end this week's episode. Well, me friends, it seems as if the Fibulous, Kalila, and Clyde were able to not only acquire a strange orb, or a pearl, but they were able to acquire a very strange red sword. A red herring, if you might. But it also seems as if on their way home, Defibulous' brother decides to make himself known. Well, they do say sibling rivalry is the worst type of rivalry. Well, me friends, that's all we have for this time. I will see you next time. And till then, may the dice gods bless your every roll. We here at What the Dice would like to thank Paizo for creating Pathfinder, Epidemic Sound for our music, as well as Sirenscape for our sound effects. If you would like to reach out to us, you can do so on Facebook at What the Dice Pod, Twitter at What the Dice Pod, and of course email What the Dice Pod at gmail.com. And if you liked our little adventure, please share us with your friends and rate and review us. 